Hello, this is Breezy or Big Freeze on Tumblr and I asked what you guys would like me to do a tutorial on and so I had a few an anons asking me to, to, do, yeah, to do a tutorial on shading. So I just have this picture I drew a while back, maybe you recognize it if you've been following me. It was just a warrior cat character, I think Barry knows. So. I'm just kind of going to walk through what I would do to shade this character because I didn't shade it. But so if you see here I have my layers right here. Um, if you notice these are kind of offset over this one. What it is is they are clipping masks so they are locked basically it's like locking a layer but they're locked onto a, the layer below it. Usually the shortcut for that is pro is control G control yeah control G and what this does I I use them you can just erase around the line art if you really want to but I like to use these because it's a lot easier <laughs> and I'm lazy I guess I don't like erasing things but I basically have all my colors already down on here and I already drew the eyes so the first thing you're going to want to do when it comes to, to shading is you're going to want to define your light, light source and what color that light's going to be. I think with this character, I'm going to go with a, um, well it doesn't really matter, we can always change it later, but for right now let's go with a, a purplish blue, kind of like the sun. Let's go with that, this color. And it kind of looks awkward because I already colored in the line there. Let me, okay. So the first thing you're going to do with shading is you're going to want to define your light source. So you, I usually, if you watch, like, usually when I draw, I know what light source I want. But it, it's also a good idea to plot it out. Like, I'm going to use the highlight as, on the eyes as my reference because but the light is coming from this way so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep in mind where the light is coming from or say it's coming from this corner and I'm gonna try and this is just a guideline I'm just gonna just gonna lighten what I what I know is gonna be like uh, this is a big thing with anatomy um, is I mean it's one thing to draw the cat or dog or whatever you want to do but the but anatomy is also really useful to know when it comes to shading. Because you could have a good shading technique, but if you don't know where your cat's at, or whatever your drawing's anatomy is, you're not going to... Or even a person's, like, anatomy, you're not going to make a good... It's not going to... It's not going to look right. So, I'm just going to line out the basic... Basic... Basically where I want my shading to go. And I don't know exactly what type of shading you guys wanted me to do, but I'm just going to go with gradient because that's that's kind of like my I, that's my favorite style and I think that's usually that's usually what I use on my big shaded pieces. So, I'm just going to line out basically where I want. Cats have big shoulders. There's this pose floating around where it's like, "Oh, cats have tiny shoulders." It's all fluff. No, they're all shoulders. Don't believe that. <laughs> so, obviously here, this is going to be darker because the head's going to cast a shadow, but the shoulders are going to stick out a little bit just because of how, they, cause how they're lying. So I kind of make the shadow go there again. So, And then the back's probably going to be light because of, because of the angle. So I might not have as much shading on the back here because of the head, but maybe a bit on the fur sticking out. And just, just a little more down on the legs. Maybe a little few hairs on the butt. And then the top of this tail. <laughs> Short stubby tail. <laughs> to do much for it. Okay. So that's just kind of the basic outline of shading. You know, nothing, nothing huge. It's all about the light source. Um. So yeah, I'm just gonna lighten that a little bit so I can see maybe a few 
errors, like maybe not quite so much. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Okay, I want to say it, but no. Okay, outline and shading. This is work. Because I want it above and Okay. So before I break everything. Alright. So now I got the basics like I got the basics of the shading I want down. Um so what I'm gonna do now is from I'm gonna do gradient shading. So what I'm gonna do with gradient shading is I usually use the lasso tool because it's a bit easier. But but with like the same thing in mind, you can also use the um just use the eraser. Or if you want some really softer shading and you kind of want a soft furry look, you might use like, you, you could also use the eraser and you could use like a nice airbrush, which is, which is nice for um, really soft patterns and stuff if you want a soft image. But here, because I mean, I didn't really like make it a very soft looking picture, I'm just going to use, I'm just going to use a hard, a hard, um, just going to use the lasso tool. And I'm just going to eat away the shading just little bits at a time. I'm not going to be super fastidious or whatever the word is for about this. But, you know, just kind of jagged look for fur. It kind of goes everywhere. But just kind of make sure you kind of know what direction the fur is going. Again, that's where references are so, so useful. I'm not going to look at them because I don't want someone's picture of a cat going around everywhere when this is a tutorial. So, I don't know, I could, I could pause the video, but it would be more work. And I'll just delete, oops, I was on the wrong way. I'll just delete the shading. And I'll just go about it like that. Just kind of flip the image occasionally. Just to make sure it looks good. Because your eyes will get used to something and it will, it'll, you'll start to not notice what's wrong with it. Because there always is something wrong. <laughs> So I'm just going to keep doing this, eat away the shading one bit at a time. Until I got all this done. So I'm just going to pause the video and I'll see you guys, <laughs> I'll see you guys again when I have this done. Okay guys, back again. Um, one thing I forgot to mention was when you have a pattern underneath your drawing, it's sometimes really helpful to use like a a gray and neutral color to kind of keep yourself from getting distracted from the patterns below and trying to follow them in your shading because that's not necessarily where the the animal begins or ends <laughs> or whatever the, your subject in general I'm using an animal because I'm shit at drawing people I'm terrible at drawing people um also this cat doesn't have the best anatomy ever but I drew it like really quickly Okay, so as you can see, I kind of, I've laid out the, the cell shading part of this. Um, I didn't, this isn't the best anatomy shading job ever, but I'm not looking at references, so I'm sorry. <laughs> but I think you get the general idea, just kind of eat the, eat away the shading. Usually on the face, if you're drawing an animal, you want to pay attention to the texture of the surface underneath it. Like... A cat has really fine fur on its face, but a lot of coarser fur on its body, like coarser, longer fur. So that will kind of 
we kind of relate to the to the edges of the shading. Okay, from here, I have it set on multiply. That's usually what I use, but sometimes you can get color burn. Um, this doesn't work that well because of the, uh, like, I mean, it obviously you don't want bright red shading. I mean, you might if that's what you're going for, but I personally don't want bright red shading. Um, or darken sometimes looks okay. Um, this, the color of the cat isn't quite right for this. Um, I usually use multiply because it just darkens the layers and adds color to them. Sometimes if you have like a really dark, a darker base, sometimes color will work if you, like if your cat's like, or if your subject is like really dark and you just want to color in an area so you know it's shading. <coughs> okay, so next, um, Usually I would do another layer of shading underneath it just to kind of um, um, define the like the depth within the shading, but I really don't think I'll have enough time for that. So what, I'm just going to go straight to gradient. Um, basically what I do with gradient shading is it's kind of like this, like kind of like this. I'm going to use the lasso tool. But then I'm gonna I'm gonna find I'm gonna take this gradient and I'm gonna um it's sort of linear for one thing and I'm gonna put it inside I guess inside the gradient if that makes sense. So let's start here on the shoulder. Just kinda like this is where you define like the round parts of it or the like the shoulders are really round parts, so it's gonna have quite a bit more gradient. And, um, so I'm just going to do this. I'm going to, I'm going to draw the outline of where I want the gradient with the lasso tool. And this is somehow, sometimes you can, like, get, like, more defined of the stuff underneath than you can with shell shading. But here's basically, like, here's where I want this gradient here. So I'm going to take my, gra I'm going to take the gradient tool and I'm just going to, do a quick line. It's not that difficult. It will. It, it kind of looks somewhat awkward on the gray base, but I also have multiply set to 100, which is pro, which is not what's going to be like. It's going to be a lot lighter. Otherwise, it will look awkward. So, but I have it set to um, max opacity because I want to be able to see what I'm doing. So sometimes I'll just draw a rough outline and kind of define it with the lasso tool. This usually works best for things with like fur, but I mean, cause humans are usually kind of soft. We don't really have a lot of, but like it could work on hair and stuff. I think you get the, the general idea. I'm just figuring out kind of the edge, kind of where the shading would be. Like here underneath, it probably have more shading, but it not wouldn't be defined enough to get its own blocked in area. So I'll just use the gradient because it's a lot lighter and easier. I guess not really easier, but you know. Sometimes you can even say you got this area, you want this entire thing to be gradient. This is not the best anatomy of shading I've ever done. I'm sorry, I'm just kind of nervous about this. Um, and you could take a big soft airbrush, lower the opacity of it quite a bit, and just kind of erase some of it away, and that can make a that can make the gradient like even more even softer see and I'll do the same on the face but the usually with the face it's kind of harder to do the gradient because it's not really because it's a lot smaller 
and a lot less round and more, like features are more defined on the face than they are on the rest of the body. So like usually this ends up being just on like the brows and the, and on the um, whiskers. I don't know, muzzle, that's what I'm looking for. See, and as I'll go through, like, you can see if I lighten the shading, it, it looks better than when it's at full opacity, because, but it, like, it kind of softens the edges a little bit, gives it depth. Usually I'd have a diff, I'd have another layer of shading underneath it, but underneath the, the layer I have already, but I don't really feel the need, because it's not that big of a picture. Oh, I just like to put in that I'm not an expert. Um, I'm probably doing something wrong. But this is just generally how I make the pictures. The best thing I really say about when it comes to making pictures is, does it look good or not? Like, that's the thing. That's all art is, is does it look good? Like, usually it looks good if it's done properly, but sometimes rules or whatever have to be broken to make your picture look good. And that's okay. Um, I wouldn't, like, for instance, typically when you do shading, you're going to want your highlights and, um, your highlights and your shadows to complement each other. You know the color wheel, how you'll have, like, oh, don't mix, uh, red and green because you'll get brown. So, but, like, when shading, typically if you have green light, your shading is going to look red. But sometimes that's not the mood of your picture and you'll have you you want green light because you kind of want like electronic look or something. I don't know. So you're going to want to have um so you're probably going to want to have blue shading, you know? So just kind of keep in mind like the mood of your image, things like that when doing shading. That's also on how dramatic it wants. For instance, if you want really a dramatic looking piece, you're going to want nice, dark, defined shading, but if you kind of want like, oh, frolic through the field, really, everything's nice and cozy, you're going to want really, you're going to want more soft shading or maybe more bright, a, more like a bright color or whatever. And, um, so that's just something to keep in mind. Um, sometimes I'm using the, the soft, the big soft airbrush to just kind of soften the edges a bit more, but I'm, always keeping out a very low opacity and if I need to do it like more I can work I can just keep going over this spot you don't want to do it all in one fell swoop um but yeah like and maybe you want something like soft and cuddly you're it, this is more like a, this is obviously more of a color thing but it's useful in shading um like kind of want to go for because I have like the really bright the really bright yellow, I might change this color to, say I wanted a more, I don't know, I wanted it to be more like it was in the sunlight, so I might have a even brighter purple color. Just 
and then so what'll happen on the so I'm, I'm oh by the way I'm pretty much done with the gradient like there's really not much else I can do because everything else is more defined I might come in with a big soft airbrush only this time not on the racer and just kind of like as the if I unlock the layer unsoften some edges oh that's besides oh that's another thing when I'm changing the color I'm locking the layer so it won't go over like say I have I see I have it like this right now I'm gonna change it to gray look it's gonna do all these weird line things don't do that so you want to lock it and it'll be like oh look there's gray so okay so maybe next thing we want to do is we're gonna do some um, highlights so obviously I have this nice purple blue um so for my highlights I'm probably gonna want purple blue with the opposite colors of those opposite color of purple is yellow opposite color of blue is orange so I'm probably logically gonna want a yellow orange and it's probably and in order to it uh, yeah, because I'm gonna use a multiply layer so I'm gonna want a really light I'm re uh, an overlay layer so I'm gonna want a really light orange so highlights are kind of the same thing as shading only in reverse instead of eating away the shading like I did um, I'm gonna like oh by the way usually it's easier to eat away the shading because uh, because it's always I always find it easier to work from the light so to go from shadow to light I mean some I mean you might be better at coloring it in or whatever whichever works for you um, I'm not good at coloring it in so I'm not gonna bother to show you how to color it in um, I always eating eat things away um, so as you can see with the with the um, highlights it's just kind of drawing in where I want the light to hit again I'm not gonna fill up the entire area I took out of shading because obviously it's not all gonna be that light um, I kind of have this little crease in his head. Oops, that was bad. My tablet moved. <laughs> oh, I'm drawing with the tablet too. That might be helpful. It's a it's a bit hard if you don't have one. You can do this with the mouse. That's that's why the lasso tool you can do with the mouse. Um. So. Oh, and I'm making multiple selections by pressing shift. Um, but you can use the lasso tool in the in the gradient tool with the mouse, no big deal. Um, most things, as long as you're not trying to like get like a really soft paint tooly thing, it's gonna look okay with just the mouse. You're just gonna have to work on it a little more. The tablet is, admittedly, much easier to draw with. <laughs> Just because of the motion is more natural. I mean, it's more, like, everybody knows how to draw with a pen and pencil, even if they're not, like, an artist. So. So, yeah, I'm just doing the highlights. Ooh, so exciting. Sorry, this is probably a really boring video. Um, I'm trying to think of things to say because, like, there's... Shading is not exact, really that complicated. It's just, it's all about trying to figure out where the light is. Um, hmm. I'm sorry. I guess I could end the video again, but. I just to start it back up, so. So yeah, highlights just kind of where the light would hit the most. Um, all about light source. I two light sources are a bit difficult to work with, um, especially if they're different colors, because then you'll have to change the color of the shading and the highlights as you go through it 
because I mean it's not gonna look the same throughout the entire picture I that's kind of like another tutorial in and of itself um, I don't usually like to use two light sources because it's a pain in the butt <laughs> Sometimes, though, you might have glowing things around your character, and you're going to have to use two light sources. But if you have to do that, I, for your sake, please make them the same color. <laughs> okay, so there's the highlights. Not... oops. I mean, they're really bright, because it's overlay layer of the same color as the pretty much the same color as the base. So I'm probably gonna lower the opacity a little bit. Um I guess really don't have time. I'm running out of time because I don't want to make this an overly long video. But for the um base basically I'm gonna probably want to do gradient again on the highlights just to kinda um make sure that we got the right thing going on, you know? So, it's essentially going to be the same thing. With the overlay layer, and, uh, overlay layer and multiply layer, I'd really suggest trying not to let them overlap at all. Um, you can sort of see the edges of this. I'm trying to keep the highlights from going onto there because otherwise you get like this gross color. It's no fun um, because they're opposite colors. But the for the... Um, for the highlights, I usually end up using the eraser a lot more because it's, because I mean, I already feel, I've kind of filled in the highlights too much. There's not a lot of space between them. So it's a lot easier to use the eraser as, through, as a gradient. Um, yeah. So yeah, cause like, you see, if I just went, ooh, gradient, ooh, wow, that looks no. Um, it's just kind of, I end up using this one. Oh, and that was the thing. See, you get this kind of gross, nasty off color. And don't. It's especially especially if you have a lot of. You have a a larger opacity. If you, I didn't use quite a huge opacity because I don't really have that much um, color in this. But yeah, so that's that's the basics highlight of shading. The last thing you want to want to know about shading, really, besides obviously layering it again. Um, when I layer it again, I might use shading on top, and I'm probably going to use a lot less, a lot smaller pieces of shading if I want to do shading again on top, because it's just, I mean, overlay layers are, overlay layers are kind of powerful anyway. So again, it's all about looks. Everything in art is about looks. If it looks better, do it. Um, so, and then the last thing, and then... Obviously, when if I wanted to do darker shading, I'd probably just kind of like stick it around here, um, maybe a bit of shape in the face here, you know, just kind of like look at the anatomy and what you see in the shadows. Um, the last thing really there is about shading is backlighting. Um, maybe you've done that picture, maybe you've seen a ball. It's, a ball is usually a good thing. Um, it's usually like, oh, here's the black, here's the black ball, yeah? And maybe there's a highlight, like a steel ball, okay. There's a highlight here, Ooh. but, and maybe one right here, look at that. And then there's one behind here. That's backlighting. This is a terrible ball, don't, don't use this ball for me. But that is backlighting. That's basically the lighting from behind bouncing off of whatever the lighting from the light source bouncing off of whatever is behind the character and onto the character. Um, the best way I could like, it's somewhat hard to see in like a house or whatever, but just kind of hold up an object and hold it up over something of a, like a weird color. Like, um, I have a notebook here in a, um, in a remote, a black remote. And I, like just pick something and hold it up against a bright color and you could see that you have the lighting from the object from the light source onto the object but underneath the object especially if you have like a bright color like a really like light green or something it's gonna reflect back and you're gonna see the green underneath reflecting from that that's what backlighting is 
And that's kind of important if you want your character to look like it's interacting with the environment. So maybe if I have a bunch of trees in the background, I'm probably going to have a greenish color. Like, um, usually a lighter green. And I'm, what, what I'm going to do with it is I'm going to take... I'm gonna take the color and like the parts that are kind of behind, you know, like I said, um, I'm gonna take a, so a smaller brush and just kind of look at that, um, just a little bit of shading, just kind of to, you know, so it's environment, so it fits better within this environment and it doesn't look so stiff in there. Um, that makes more sense with the background, so if you have like a bright red background maybe, uh, something's bright, uh, bouncing off something bright red, you're gonna want a nice, you're gonna want a really red color, cause that's the, that's the color working off of it. Um, so yeah, just this is kind of the stuff that would stick out from behind to get quite bounced on it. Um, like the back of the legs, cause these are deep in shadow, but they're not necessarily in the shadow. So they are in the shadow. But the backlighting is just going to be really thin. Going to kind of keep everything. Tie everything together. It also breaks up the shading so you don't have quite so much. It makes, if you have like darker shading, sometimes it'll look kind of icky. And maybe backlighting might help it. But really the best thing I could say to look out for is use references, make sure you know the structure of what you're drawing, and also make sure you realize what colors work well together and what and a lot about like composition, which is I guess if you want I could do a tutorial on what I know about comp composition, but I haven't like had any formal art training stuff. This is all I'm all self taught, so I can tell you basically what I've figured out, but um it won't be that great, so probably not not a good idea if you come to think of it. <laughs> I'm just I'm just blabbing. I'm sorry. Okay, so here's my backlighting. So it's kind of really on here. Usually I'd use overlay or soft light. I'm gonna use overlay just because everything else is on overlay. And it's usually probably going to have like a lot lower opacity than your your main highlights. And you can see, see with, here's with backlighting, here's without. With backlighting look, looks a lot fuller and more 3D. Um, that's about all I can really think of. Um, yeah, um, I also recommend finding artists you like that you do like speed paints and stuff that's also helpful kind of look at how they shade and stuff but um yeah don't use this as gospel or anything it's just kind of the like basically because i'm I mean, college i'm not even an art major i'm an engineering major so i don't really know what's going on um <laughs> this is kind of what i figured out through, throughout high school so there's my shaded cat hello berry nose um so yeah if you have any questions feel free to message me about it if I didn't make any if I made something unclear um that's that's about it so I hope you have a great day and go forth in art bye bye <laughs>